if you had a warning label, what would yours say? <laughs> <laughs> What's your biggest turn on? <laughs> <laughs> this is f- disgusting, Michelle. <laughs> I can be snobby and trashy, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to That's the Tea with me, Mia Baker, presented by the Aramco Team Series. Today we are at Centurion Club. We are playing, um, I'm not playing actually, you guys are playing um, for the Aramco Team Series London. And I'm joined by two incredible guests. We've got Michelle Thompson and we've also got Marianne Skarpnord. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Excited to be here. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks oh. for having us. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you guys meet for the first time? That would have been, it's actually probably not as long ago as you would think. Oh, um, really? I assumed you've been friends since no, you were like. So I, I would have said probably after, well, after COVID, maybe. Yeah, now we met before that. Yeah, we would have known, it, like, we known each, each other, other for many years, but we like, we haven't been close for that long. Maybe a couple of years, two or three years. Yeah, but I don't even know what actually brought us that cl- like that close. It just kind of happened. Natural. You know, and hello, look at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, I don't know. I, like, I'm, I'm unsure like how it actually happened, but yeah, mm. I mean, maybe a couple of years, I would think. Yeah. yeah. What year did you guys start on the LET? I was there first year 2005. 2005? I know, you were nearly not born. <laughs> I was in year five at school. <laughs> Wait, how old are you? Am I allowed to ask that? Uh, not really, but since you <laughs> ask, I'm 27. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you add another 10. I'm mind blown. So how old were you when you yeah, first uh, were on tour then? 18. 18. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm actually mind blown. When did you join? Uh, so my first year was 2009. And then I only competed for that year and then obviously had a, about a four year break. And what then I came back um, 2013. What happened in your four year break? Well, I was obviously everyone knows I was in the police for a couple of years. What? Um, yeah. I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah. So yeah I was in, police this is crazy staff. already. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was in the, I joined police. the police for a little bit. Yeah, and wow. just, I just wanted to kind of do something totally different. I, like it was one of those careers that I looked at and I thought, you know, if I, I don't ever do it, I'll kind of regret not doing something else. What was so it like working in the police? That is polar crazy, opposite crazy, to yeah, golf. Yeah. Um, more of the fact that you didn't know what you were going to deal with kind of every day. Mm. Everything was always different. Mm. But I guess golf kind of similar because you don't know what golf game yeah. you're going to get every day. <laughs> so I guess you need um, a certain level headedness, don't you? Where it's like any situation that arises, you have to be able to be yeah, cool, calm and collected. I guess you... The adrenaline was, it's kind of the same because obviously the adrenaline that you get from golf mm. was kind of the same when you got a call, you know, you had that adrenaline of, oh, what am I going to deal with here? And some things were actually okay and others were a bit, because I felt, I still felt like, so I would have been, so that was like 2012. Mm. So like I would have been 24. I still think that's quite young yeah. for someone that, to be in the police, I think, Definitely. because of the stuff that you have to deal with. But I was in there with guys and girls that were like 18. So I could never have dealt with what I dealt with at that young age. I thought, you know, that was pretty hard hitting at times, I would mm. guess, but um, I'm glad I did it. And Do you think it's helped with your golf at all? Well, I think I realise how lucky I am to kind of be doing what I'm doing. Because mm. um, there's a lot of people that would give anything to do this job and but I did enjoy it and it was, you know, I definitely matured yeah. while I was there because you have to, I think, because mm-hmm. if you don't, um, there's a lot of things you learn about yourself and about other yeah. people. Yeah, but it was such a good um, learning experience. Yeah, but I'm glad I did it and yeah. I actually remember the first time I met you. Do you remember the first time you met me? Yeah, it, was, it wasn't it here. It was here, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, so I'd been doing golf stuff for one year in COVID. I've never met anybody in my life, never been outside properly on a golf course get invited to play in this event which is the most nerve-wracking thing for someone who's doesn't even know how to play golf and I was so bad <laughs> I was so bad I couldn't even hold the club I was shaking the whole time I was anxious through the roof I had a panic attack and I've just played awfully during the day and I went on the range in the evening and you were there because I was like 
I need to practice. I need to practice. I'm so bad and I can't go out tomorrow. Yeah, but the thing, I was there because I was also thinking the same thing. (laughs) (laughs) See, it happens at all levels. Yeah, and then you were so nice to me. I looked, she was like, I love this girl. This girl's amazing. She's so kind. She's helping me. She's giving me tips. So she, she, I remember I was hitting balls on the range and she was obviously hitting balls next to me. And I was like, I need to help her. I was like, she's really nervous. Like I could just see like, she was holding the club so tight and... I was like, I'm gonna have. My dad was. And your dad, my dad was yeah, there as well. Was my dad, was, yeah. And then we got you hitting driver, and you were like, you absolutely ripped it. And yeah, then and I, was, I was like, there you go. And I just off I went. And then, lo and behold, and I remembered it forever <laughs> till this day. It's sort a of magical moment in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, back to the golf. You guys have played this course before. This is actually the third year that it's been held here. Um, do you like the course? What are your thoughts on the course? Yeah, I love the course. Um, I think this year it's the best it's ever been when we played here. Yeah. It is in so good condition. I like, have heard that. The fairways are like carpets. The greens are so nice. They are like, there's there's nothing to complain about this week. So um, the only thing we want now is the sun to shine. I know, looking a bit grey. Yeah. Um, what's uh, your favourite hole on the course to play? Um... I think when they put the T where they put the T on 18 now, I think that's a really good finishing hole. Um, where is it? Why? So you can reach like into the... Is it on the, the back of the green or the front of the green? The, the T. Oh, I thought you said... You, <laughs> <laughs> you said the pin. No, the T. I had pin. <laughs> yeah. So they, they moved the T up. I think we played... I don't remember if we played it there last year or not. I think we did because I didn't think it was much different actually when I played it. So yeah, now we might have played there last year too. Um, yeah, because then it makes it a lot better as a the fifty fourth hole, the last hole we're playing, because um, you have that bunker in the middle mm-hmm. that if you if you are in that bunker, you just had to hit a wedge out, and then if you're not in the bunker, you are going to reach. Yeah. So I feel that there's a lot of stuff that can happen on the last hole. Which Exciting. I think is fun. Yeah, definitely. What about you, Michelle? Um, yeah, I, I agree with what Marianne's saying. Um, Marianne? Marianne, yeah. Why did She's I also say? known I, as I never Scarfie. called you that. Why did I call you that? Why did I call you that? Yeah. Um, okay. She's I'm just trying to be I'm just trying to be proper for really, the podcast. really weird. You, know? you can yeah. relax now. Um, yeah. Um, I just think there's a, there's a lot of difficult holes there mm. out on the course. Um, you have to be like on point with every part of your game I think mm. um I like f- I like um 14 the par three um I think it's a tough hole depending on where they put the pin you can't really miss that green in any yeah. spots no um but I like I like 18 and obviously you saw with what Bronte did last year yeah um it is a good finishing hole and you know it'll be exciting to see who comes out on top yeah I'm actually very excited for this week yeah so, in this podcast, we have this thing called The Baker's Dozen. I am Mia Baker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you've seen any of the podcasts previously. No, I'm not a podcast. They're going to be doing watcher. that tonight, obviously. Yeah. Um, but we have 13 balls in that pot just there. And you're going to pick three balls each. And each ball corresponds to a question I've got on my laptop. Okay. However, if you pick ball number 13, you have to do a forfeit. So, feel free to pick your three balls. I'm going to get my laptop. Okay. Just three. Straight away three. Yeah, just pick three. Aisha. Oh, oh, you've please got don't be there. <laughs> All right. Marianne. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> What's your first number? My first number is six. Six. Okay. Do you have any superstitions? Uh, I do. Oh, you do? Go on then. (laughs) Um, I can only play um, on number one and twos on the golf ball. It needs to be number one or number two. Um, Only white tees. Only white tees. Yeah, okay. they can be with any can color. can be like a logo, or if it's not too bright, that's okay. But I prefer plain white tees. 
Um, do you carry your own then, or do you take the ones from the like? Uh, no, I've got my own. Yeah, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Just wonder. I got one. I got some for Christmas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she puts that on her Christmas wish list. Yeah. Plain white tees only. Um, I think I, I used to. If I played really bad in an outfit, I could, it. could never use it again ever. <laughs> um, really? Yeah, I think. But the, the golf ball and the tees are definitely the worst because if if I run out of one or twos or don't have any white tees, I panic. Yeah, what do you do? I panic. Yeah. Can, yeah. You know, if you go out with a certain number of balls. You can't get someone else to bring any more balls whilst you're out playing. Yeah, so I've got six balls in my bag and I'm thinking if I lose six balls, mm. it's time to go home <laughs> anyway. So uh, <laughs> if I have to walk off, that's fine. But would you be able to get given more balls? I you think can't? you can buy like halfway around if you need oh, more. Can. can you? I think so, yeah. But it has to be oh, obviously the same, the same ball, ball, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right, um, Michelle, what's your number? Uh, I have number two. Number two. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. If you had a warning label, what would yours say? <laughs> <laughs> um, explicit content, probably. <laughs> <laughs> that sums you up to a That's good. Yeah, that's, that's good. All right, scarves. Number nine. Nine. What stresses you out the most? But on the golf course? Or, or in, in life? In general. In life in general. What stresses me out the most? Um, that's a good question. Airports. Uh, you must be used to airports. Oh, yeah, well, I, w- I would actually say airports when there is school holidays. Oh, that is really Because annoying. that is probably the worst place to be. Mm-hmm. It is so annoying. You get these people out that travel once a year. They're not ready. Like, they've got nothing ready. They're standing to check in and they don't even know what to do. But they're looking and, up like this and, and they're, they're taking up, up the like whole this, space. And they go, oh, is that my check-in? <laughs> yes, it is. Get on with it. And then you, get to, then you get to security. And they go, oh, can we not bring 10 litres of water in our backpacks? <laughs> no, you cannot. You cannot. Um, and that, that, that makes me just, that makes me stressed because it gets so annoyed. I was like, just be ready. Just sort <laughs> yourself out and get on with it. The thing oh. is, it's not just one person. There's so many of there them. There are so many. Exactly the There's same. Some, so June, July, August. should just drive around Europe instead. Like, maybe <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that is stressing me out a little yeah. bit or it makes me probably more annoyed but um uh now i'm not sure what well, bad golf stresses me out yeah how do you manage that yeah i don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's now hard. bad golf like bad bad golf over a longer period of time stresses yeah. me out definitely yeah. Um, Because it kind of wears you out mentally. In the end, you're like so tired. You just, I don't even know what to do with this now. Um, But, you know, we all all get that and we all need to get through it. And then you have maybe a few good years and then it happens again. Like, you know, it feels like it's a bit of a circle. But it's life really though, isn't it? Like you just have years which are better than others. Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. Mm. All right, Michelle. I got deep. Um, <laughs> uh, I have number five. Number five. Why do who, I... I feel like I'm getting all the bad ones here. Who wrote this? I wrote that. No. Oh, who wrote Okay, who wrote this? <laughs> What's your biggest turn on? Biggest <laughs> <laughs> turn on. Oh, no. Um... <laughs> Jordan! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she can answer for you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. Um, it can be PG. Huh? It can be PG. <laughs> um, someone who I don't know, like I, someone who is... Um, really, I don't know, like... so. <laughs> just someone who is, like, 
just really nice, like a really nice person. Yeah. Um, good heart. Very good. Yeah, that is. Yeah, definitely. Good heart. Trustworthy. Um, kind of look like not looks after me, but just like is has my int- my best interests yeah. at heart, really. Um, yeah, is that like care for you? Yeah, like dark hair, tanned, good teeth, like. <laughs> <laughs> John! <laughs> <laughs> um have you how many balls have you got left one ball? one ball each yeah. right scarps number 11 11 11 what is the grossest food you've ever had to eat to be polite oh to be polite uh i don't really do that <laughs> <laughs> what would you do uh i would just not eat it no, you wouldn't just not eat it. So you'd, you'd, oh, you're no. a com- you'd be a complainer. Don't no, say, but say, if say, I was... say, you went to Michelle's house and she made you this absolutely amazing meal. She spent 24 hours cooking for you, brought it to you. You absolutely hate it. Tell them what you would really say. What would you do? Like, we can bleep I would out say, here. <laughs> this is f- disgusting, Michelle. <laughs> Even though she'd spent hours oh, yeah. and hours and hours on it. Wouldn't you think that well, was... it? You need blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, but I'm thinking now. Look at it from the other side. If you don't get true feedback, how can you improve? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a special recipe. Yeah, and she's you're going to totally crush missed her soul. <laughs> she's, you missed, totally missed you've it. You missed the best ingredient clearly. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I don't think I would. I like because I'm very you wouldn't even difficult. just try it. I'm very pretend. difficult with food. Mm. Um, so now that would not be a thing that I would do. I think, just I, I would try it because I can't know that it's disgusting before I've tried yeah. it. Uh, spit but it out. you would, you know, <laughs> She'd be like, "Do you have a napkin?" <laughs> you spit this out. <laughs> yeah, I'm a foodie. I eat a lot of food, and I eat a lot of food. So you can see straight away if I like it or not. It's not. I don't really have to say anything. No. Yeah. But yeah, you no. know what you're getting with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll remember never to cook. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a pizza and a happy. Yeah, true. Yeah. Right, Michelle, what's your last? Um, 12. 12. <laughs> Why are you getting all these ones? <laughs> what is your go-to pickup line? <laughs> Oi, hello. Um, Do you have like a go-to pickup line? Um, Success rate, 100%. Hey, Do you play golf? <laughs> <laughs> that is the worst I've ever heard in my it life. Was the, hey. That's... <laughs> Pathetic, do Michelle. I don't need pickup lines, Scar. They come oh. to me. <laughs> That's what it is. They come to me. I am Michelle Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be like, bye. <laughs> do you have a pickup line, Scar? Uh, that is. Uh, no, I don't pick up people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They come to me yeah. too. <laughs> I see how it is here. <laughs> oh. No, but honestly, I don't even know. Like, how would it be to go on a date? I don't think I could actually... I don't think like I would understand thing. what to do on a date. What do you do on a date? Like, like sit there... Talk? Talk about each other. What? You ask them questions and they respond. It's called the Is conversation. That what you do? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you just sit in silence. You would, would you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, this food is <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right, so the next part of the podcast got an ipad here i've got some pictures <laughs> oh god oh god exactly we have some pictures the first ones are for you so there's three for you and there's three for michelle and we're just going to talk through what the pictures are of so the first one talk to Aww. us about this oh that's my old dog she was my best friend her name is her name was doris Doris? Yeah. What a cute Doris. name. <laughs> Doris the dog. Yeah, Michelle, now I'm nearly getting upset just looking at her. Oh, how um, long? She uh, was 12 and a half when she died, and she died when I was in Australia playing. Oh. So I had a complete breakdown. Imagine. <laughs> yeah. What breed is she? Uh, she is half Chihuahua, half something else. Can't even remember. I love the name Doris. Yeah, yeah no. Doris. Yeah. Like I'm obsessed. Well, uh, if when they're mixed, I just call them a little bullshit. 
Uh, she was the best dog ever. She like she would oh. sleep on my pillow every night. She came to practice with me. She did everything did with me. Did you travel with her? No. Oh. Did not travel with her. She wouldn't would never ever want to go on an airplane. How nice would it be to be able did to travel with her? Did you ever take her to a tournament that um you drove to? No. Yeah. Oh yeah. She came to every tournament that I could drive to, so basically Sweden, Denmark. Um, yeah, no, I miss her. Oh, she's so cute. Mm. All right, this is the next one. Is Memories. Me? Oh, yeah. That. Is that me? Is that me? <laughs> is that me? Sorry, is that me Can next I have to a look the at Olympic that? rings? Yeah, but that person there was very skinny, you see. <laughs> it's like, how <laughs> is that me? Oh, my gosh. Are you sure that's you? It's her hair down. Yeah, I know. I do like I my hair I've down. I've ever seen time. your hair down. <laughs> <laughs> like, who is that? Yeah, girl? that was um, Olympics in Rio, twenty sixteen, I think it was. Apparently, so far it's been the mes- most exciting week of your life. Yeah, yeah. Back that in twenty sixteen. Yeah, there we go. In Rio, yeah. You even got the year right. Yeah, that was in Rio. That was pretty cool. Cool. Yeah. So that's in the village where we stayed. Um, that is a pretty. Flex. Yeah, yeah. that is pretty cool, actually. Um, so that was like you got an apartment, mm-hmm. but and I think they sold off those apartments after. I'm not sure, but because when you came in, it was like a living room, but nothing was ready other than the bathrooms and the bedrooms. Like there was supposed to be a kitchen there, but the kitchen was kind of missing. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds um, good. How do you get picked for the Olympics? Do you like apply or do they select you? How does it work? Well, no, it's a top. Top two from each country on the yeah. world rankings, yeah. isn't it? Or there's a, oh. there's actually a separate Olympics ranking. Uh, but don't even ask me how that works. I've got no idea. And if you get asked, you have to do it, or is it? Uh, no, no, you don't have to. No, you don't have to. No. Do it. Oh. But it's a cool thing. You to go, do, right? you go. If you if you're selected and you want to go, you do go. You have a tattoo of the Olympic rings. No, no I do not. <laughs> Everyone does. Got, <laughs> I've got proof there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is really cool. It must have been so surreal as well. Yeah, it was. Like seeing all the other athletes that you yeah. normally just see on TV and now they, they stand next to you, you're like, oh, that's what you look like. <laughs> Much taller than I expected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is such a cool thing to have done. Okay, and this is the final photo. Oh, a memorable experience. That is a very good memory, that. Talk to us. That was taken just about... 100 yards from where we're sitting. Mm-hmm. Um, Your name up there? Yeah, name is oh, lovely. <laughs> so when was that? 20... 21. 21. So two, two years ago. Two years ago. I need to step it up then. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, so that's when I won here two years ago. Um, and that was um, pretty cool. It was the first ATS that we played. Mm-hmm. Um and back then we had the team event was all three days. So You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, um, I was just so focused on the team event. Mm-hmm. So I actually, because when you're out there, there's more leaderboards for the team than individual. So I hadn't even seen where I was on the individual, but just focused on the um, team. And I think we were like... Might be shared lead or one behind or something going down the last. Um, and I made a birdie and thought, oh, we might have a chance to win this. Got really excited. Yeah. And then I walk off the green and David comes up to me and goes, oh, more than likely uh, there is a playoff. And I was like, oh, okay, so who's in the playoff? And he looked at me and he goes, you? <laughs> I was like, what? I don't think so. And he goes, yeah, in the indiv- individual wow. tournament, you're in a playoff. I was like, shit. That's why did that happen? Know- <laughs> How did you not know? <laughs> no, because there was like, yeah. a, just it was mainly team leaderboards and that's where my focus was. So like, I, I played really well that day, but I was miles behind. So I didn't even think of that as yeah. a chance. Do you feel like it helped the fact that you had the team to concentrate on versus the individual. Oh, definitely, yeah, mm. absolutely. And you probably have less pressure because you think, oh, if I mess up this hole, there's another two people. Or three yeah, people can yeah. Help. Yeah, definitely. I think, but I think that was a lot easier to do when it was three days mm. and no cut. Now there's two days, and it, mm. so now you kind of 
automatically you think about your own score as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but that was... Um, That's pretty cool. That was a fun day, yeah. Do you like the team element? Yeah, I do. Why? Yeah. Um, I think a bit that it makes it a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. Uh, and you can have a bit more fun than you normally can in a normal tournament. But now that it's only two days, I think it's taken a little bit of that team spirit away. Mm. I feel that it was a lot more when it was all three days, but I still like it. But I, to be honest, I probably preferred when it was three days, not mm. two days. And I love team golf. I think it should be a thing. Yeah. It's so nice to not feel like you're on your own. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love it. I'm like, yes, give me the support. Hold my hand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. So nice. Right, Michelle. We've got British Open 2022, Muirfield. Yeah, um, that was my second British Open. I think the first one I played in was uh, Troon. I'd been reserve a couple of times before. Um, Sunningdale and Royal Lytham, I think, and maybe one other. And I'd never actually played, so it was nice to obviously play Troon. And then Muirfield um, last year, I'd obviously never played there before. Yes. Um, so yeah, that was up yeah. in your home country. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice. <laughs> Scotland. And obviously, the one what, that I played in Troon was during COVID, so yeah. there was no spectators. So that was the first British Open I'd ever played that I'd ha actually been able to have like family and people yeah. there to support me. So. I like that. I'm coming for you. <laughs> heart eye emoji. Heart eye emoji. <laughs> It's such a cool moment, though, isn't it? When you realise, like, as a kid, this would have been your dream. Yeah. To go I remember play. when I was younger, and, like, you would have done it as well. Like, you're on the practice putt in green, you're like, this is the win. Yeah. This is the win yeah. open. This yeah. is the win the open, you know. And I probably never, ever thought... Well, I, I probably would have thought, yeah, I'm going to... Mm. In my head, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to qualify for British yeah. Open or whatever. But realistically, you're like, yeah, probably I'll maybe, I'll maybe play. Yeah. But, no, like, then it actually obviously happens. make it happen. Is yeah. You just have to win one now and then. I'll there you go. Happen. What do you think differentiated you from being someone who's, like, dreaming about it to being someone who's actually getting there? Um, I don't really know. Like, I guess hard work and determination to actually succeed and, mm. and do that, I think. and Persistence. Persistence, yeah. To, like, you know, the amount of times that I've actually been a reserve... Mm. I think I've got four players' badges and never played any of them, you know. Yeah. And, and like at that point, I probably could have been like, "I'm never going to be able to play one." Mm. And then eventually, you know, qualifying for one and playing it just makes you obviously want to keep playing, keep qualifying for it, and yeah. keep doing well. So yeah, I think that's probably definitely persistent. I think. Yeah, I think you need a lot of that and grit. Okay. This is cute. Look at your little <laughs> face. <Aww. laughs> so obviously I had qualified for the, the tour in 2009 and then obviously took a little bit of a break, came back, played Access Tour for a couple of years and that was the year that I, what was that, 2017? 16. 16. October 2016. Yeah, so that was me qualifying. I finished top five on the Access Tour. To get my full card. Nice. Um, I look really young there. You look <laughs> so young. Like we're zooming in on her face. Yeah. <laughs> Show I'd, me. I've, I've, look at my teeth. I've got. I've had like I've obviously had my teeth done, but look how different I look. Have you had your teeth done? Yeah, I had Invisalign. Oh, everyone's got Invisalign. It's like the new top trend. Have yeah. you got Invisalign? No. Nah. Yeah. I've got perfect teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can zoom out now. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, that's so cute. Um, but yeah, that was. So this is the second time you joined L.E.T.? Yeah, so I actually, so it's obviously complicated, but, you know, you used to have, like, conditional card. You used to call mm. it a conditional card where you got a certain amount of events because you finished wherever in tour school or whatever. Um, Wait, so explain so, that to dummies. So basically you'd go to Q school and... Which is qualifying, qualifying school. Qualifying, yeah. And top. can anyone go to Q school or you have yeah, to? Yeah, I think you had to be... So, so could under, I, I think go to qualifying to, school? Your handicap had to be like, what, five or better? Or did you have to be scratch? I can't remember. Oh, I have no idea. It's changed. <laughs> it's obviously changed like yeah. over the years. Um, so you had to finish that tournament top 30 to gain full rights 
for the let so to play every single event basically mm-hmm. and i in previous years had obviously finished like 31st one year like um so 31st would guarantee that you could play say like 10 events a year oh. or whatever um so i'd obviously been playing when i came back i'd i'd managed to do that and i had 10 events a year or whatever but that was the first time that i knew that i was basically going to get in every event and i could plan my year mm. properly because it's in, like i found it, i found it so hard to go from tour to tour so play some on let yeah. and then play some on access and and managing your schedule managing and the logistics and all of and that stuff like that yeah so that was for me was quite difficult and that allowed me to yeah you know plan everything properly and give it my best shot basically and also like you know who you're traveling with and you know who's going to be there and you've got some level of comfort yeah. because being on the road it's fun but tough yeah especially yeah. when you're like hopping from these people to these people and yeah. you've got I don't know, and just... that was so difficult because I remember me and my friends were all fighting it out for like two cards I think mm. and there was like so it was like me Charlotte Thompson I think Laura Murray well Beveridge now we're all like doing so well oh, and yeah. it came down to like the last event and I remember Charlotte missed out by about I think it was like two points or something it was like oh, nothing God. and obviously like I wanted to be happy but I was absolutely devastated for her because we were all really yeah. close you know so bittersweet um, that moment isn't but it, it like it was good because she got her card from tour school anyway so like she had yeah. a second opportunity to get it and yeah. she ended up playing as well so it was actually really nice i feel like that's where persistence comes in yeah, you know if you yeah. don't get it one way there's another way yeah, or another always, way and you just keep always another chance really. trying <laughs> <laughs> you've got one yourself hey! Hey! <laughs> um this was... is the team aramco win where was this saudi, saudi yeah. wow i don't even know where to start <laughs> first ever saudi ladies team international champs in caps all your thank yous, an amazing two weeks, some of the best golf you've ever seen, and thank you for letting me be part of your team. Yeah. That was <laughs> sweet. Wasn't it? Yeah, so... This is lovely. Um, Emily Pedersen, obviously. Oh. And... Yeah. Cassandra. Oh, okay. Alexandra. That was, bef- that was actually before she got married. What was yeah. your team like? Oh, it, was amazing. it was a brilliant team. So good. Um, Emily, obviously played out of her skin for two weeks I think <laughs> she won the individual and then she won the individual then she won the individual in the team element and then won the team yeah so she won like she three two weeks she yeah. honestly <laughs> like the, and um it was weird because I actually as soon because she'd obviously been playing great the week before yeah I was like you know it was the only time I thought nobody can beat us because she's playing so well yeah. it's yeah. like all we had to do was back her up you know and and that's difficult, obviously, because I want, I obviously want to win the individual as well. Mm-hmm. But I knew how well she was playing. Yeah. Like, no mm. one could beat her. Like, you know, she was hitting the ball so far. She was hitting everything close. I think over the three days, she must have had, like, 21 birdies or something. Oh. I think. You know, oh, she, and, like, so I, she, just she, had 20, she had 21 birdies. I think I had nine. Cassandra would have been similar to me. And then obviously I think Matt, he had an eagle. I think he had two eagles actually. I think that was oh. the one that, yeah, he had, he hold a bunker shot on 18 for an eagle. And then I think he eagled one of the other par five. So he, but I think the rest of the time he came in when we needed him, you know, and it was. Yeah, that is helpful. And it was, yeah. it was so good. Such a good week. Wow. Yeah. That is pretty cool. So your name is also up there as well. Yeah. I've actually not seen that, so I'll need to have a look on the way back. I only spotted it earlier. I saw my name, so I was like, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, what super cute photos. I love that part. Yeah. It's actually quite nice to like reminisce on. I've not really done that before. Yeah, because you don't appreciate how far you've come. Yeah. And you put up a post and then it's already on to the next week and then you're on to the next week. And how often do you scroll through your own like social media? I don't think I've been, I need to go all the way back to the beginning and see. But it's also cringy. Like, oh, I hate it when people scroll through my no, social and show me. Yeah. I actually want to throw up. And not roll <laughs> so embarrassing. All right. So as you guys know, I asked um, my followers questions to ask you guys. And I have picked a few from these. They're all PG. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is from at Wes Garden. What do you guys like most and least about being professional golfers? 
Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what I like most is um, I get to travel the world mm-hmm. and see all... Well, actually, take that back, because we actually don't see much of the world. No. <laughs> we actually see the golf course and the hotel a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we get to obviously travel to nice places. I've actually made a... a like I promise to myself that in each place that I go to, I actually have to go and visit somewhere because mm. it's I've so gone easy for so to. long and so many mm-hmm. years where I've I've been to all these places and I've not been able to. I haven't seen anything. Haven't seen yeah. anything. Like you don't even go out for dinner. You just have room service yeah, or you stay inside and you're so tired. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the worst thing. <laughs> the worst thing's probably when you get yourself in a little bit of a rut with golf. You know, and you are obviously playing badly and you're you're grinding like so hard and you can't find the solution. Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably the worst, worst yeah. thing about it, I think. But then, you know, deep down that it just takes one week and you've just got to keep kind of mm-hmm. striving. And I feel like you put a lot of pressure on yourself as well when you're playing bad because yeah. you're like, I need it more now. Yeah. And like, my sponsors aren't going to want to keep sponsoring me if I can't yeah, play good it golf. Is, it is really difficult, you know, because you feel... I don't know, you should never feel like this, but you always feel like you're letting people down, mm-hmm. you know, and realistically, the people that are helping you, they're not but just because of how good a golfer you are, but because they actually like you. Yeah. And, and they believe in you as a person. And, and they believe, and yeah, exactly. Do, yeah. And, and a lot of the time you need to kind of take a step back and realise that golf isn't everything. Mm. Yeah. You know, and... But how hard is that human? when you're living, like, your life is just golf. Yeah. You're travelling with golfers. It's, so it's just golf, yeah. golf, 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 golf. So yeah, I guess, like... We are also as as athletes, not just golfers. I guess you 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 miss out on a lot, you know. And I think people don't really see that mm-hmm. part, you know. When you're giving your life to like this sport, and you know you might miss out on a birthday or yeah. someone's wedding or. But it's not just one person's birthday or one person's wedding. No, it's, it's so pretty many. much. It's like everyone yeah. really, and I, I guess like you don't want to say no but when you like you always feel bad because you're having to say no and all you really want is for them to understand that yeah you know this is your job and Mm. yeah um but you know there's a lot of good parts about what we do as well i guess yeah it's a very it's actually a very strange lifestyle like before i even delved even a tiny bit into your lives like i thought the idea of traveling all the time out of a suitcase i thought hell no that is wild but now I've done it, I feel almost like I live a different reality when I'm on the road versus a different reality when I'm back home. Mm. I don't know how to describe it, but it's just so polar opposite. Yeah. I always remember like people would say to me, you know, um, like, where are you going to go on holiday? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, uh, home? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? I don't want to go on holiday. Yeah. Like a holiday is coming back to my life at home yeah. because all I've done is travel, Yeah. you know? But now I obviously, I make a, a, a thing of, actually trying to go on holiday yeah. to places because you don't actually you know, get to, you yeah. don't get to do it really that often yeah. so. also you don't live for weekends you just live for the next day yeah. i think which is quite refreshing because yeah. everyone back at home they live for weekends <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like so what are you doing this weekend uh, yeah um and i think that's kind of liberating as well in a way yeah i think people don't understand that like actually sitting on the sofa just watching a bit of tally is actually quite nice oh, for us so nice. you know <laughs> Love it. You know, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> All right, Scarfy. What's your... Um, well, I think... Because I've been out here for so long now. Um, and I obviously got some really good friends out here. Now, coming out to the tournaments, other than competing and playing good golf courses, um, I think it's fun to spend time with my friends. Um, but... Also, because I've done this for so long now, I am very sick of traveling. Yeah. Airports and airplanes is not my favorite place to be. It's like the first few years of my career, I thought it was cool, could fly anywhere, didn't matter. Now I'm more like, oh, do I really have to fly all the way there? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Or do I really have to sit here and wait for another airplane? Yeah. Um, So I think that's what I'm struggling with the most at the moment, the traveling um, that it takes. Like like if you sit down and think about it, it's depressing. If you think about how many hours you've spent on 
the travel part from you leaving your home to you get to the hotel room how many hours is that that would be scary yeah it would like i think if you found it must be i don't have a number but i probably spent nearly a year of my life Mm -hmm. just traveling and that's a lot that's a lot of time Mm -hmm. What do you do when you travel, like if you're on a plane? Do you sleep? Do you watch films? Do you well, read books? No, I pro- usually watch a bit of Netflix or music. I'm not a good sleeper on the plane. Uh, For that 12-hour flight. Sleep. <laughs> I can sleep. Not no. like other people yeah. Yeah. that just sits down and goes, bye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See you when we land. That's the dream, yeah. isn't yeah. it, really? <laughs> it's like a useless person to travel with. Yeah, I remember um, coming back with Chloe Williams from <laughs> West Palm Beach. And we got to London and she's like, oh, my God, you could literally sleep anywhere. She's like, you just slept like the whole way. You kept waking up, just looking around and then going. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, that is you the know, best way to travel. It's yeah. very annoying for the person that can't sleep. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. don't get me wrong. Like, I always wake up and my neck is killing because I'm literally like, I've gone backwards like... or I've gone forward. Or... <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like um, maybe you need a little break. Yeah. <laughs> Airports don't seem to be the one. All right, this is an easy question from at stins.scapes. What's your favourite beer? Um, mine's Moretti. Moretti? Mm. I've heard that. I mean, I Unbelievable. hate beer. Um, like, especially on draft. Yeah, I heard draft is better than bottle. Yeah. Which you, is better than can. You don't really drink beer though, do you? No. No. I think it'd be cool to be like, I'll have a pint. But I don't like it. No, I could never have a pint. No. <laughs> I'll have a red what wine, you please. Oh, you're a red wine. Are you a wine drinker? Yeah. Like a think. snobby wine drinker or like a... I can be a snobby and trashy, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone, I'm there. As long as it's liquid, you're fine. <laughs> uh, all depends on the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I can be snobby and trashy. Okay. This is from Atma underscore Akatat. What's the best golf freebie you have ever been given? I'm going to say, for me, AirTag. Like, massively underrated how great that is. Yeah, I've got AirTag golf bag. and everything. Yeah. That's, like, I blew my mind, best thing I've ever had. Ever. Okay, the freebie this week wasn't bad. Oh, I haven't even looked at it. What was it? A massive bar of dairy milk. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a kilogram one. yeah it's huge eh? really yeah have you not seen that i know i've been eyeing them up and be like how do i get one of those yeah, yeah. <laughs> i actually uh, turned up to the accreditation i said i'll collect all the other players yeah. um, bags i'll hand them out <laughs> minus the dairy milk uh, um now my know. think mine the best that i can get is um the adapter have we had an adapter in your... Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've yeah. had a few. That, um, but, like, the multi-country yeah. Yeah. one. Yeah, the got one it, that you can it, um, use everywhere in the world. Mm. We got it at the Scottish Open one year, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is Beautiful. brilliant. That um, power banks are yeah, power very, banks. very, very good. I think people underestimate how important the adapter oh, yeah. Yeah. is, the, you know. Yeah, now the AirTag is used. I've got an AirTag in all my bags. It's so good. Like, I feel like you wallet, don't get you stressed. One in my wallet, yeah. I should have one inside myself too. <laughs> where am I? <laughs> where is she? <laughs> but it definitely alleviates stress. Like before, when you didn't know where your golf clubs were, you'd be like, oh, where are my golf clubs? Yeah. And now you're like, oh, I know they're in Paris. Yeah. Most of the time they are yeah. in Paris, actually. <laughs> and they're not moving. Yeah, Come they're on. not moving. Yeah, if you get a transfer, your golf clubs. Don't the most annoying you. thing with an air tag is though, if your clubs do go missing and you know where they are, because your air tag is, telling and the and the airline are saying, oh, we're not, yeah. we're unsure where they are. Well, I'm telling you, yeah. where they are. <laughs> they're yeah. in your airport because I can see where they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, that like, that happened to me when I flew back to Stockholm a few weeks ago. Uh, my luggage didn't turn up, and they were going to take it home. Uh, but. I think I landed on a Sunday and they were going to take it out on Tuesday, but I was already leaving Tuesday morning. Oh, yeah. So I had to go and get them. So I called them up and I said, oh, I need to come and get my stuff. And they say, uh, no, well, that's already, your bag is already sent. I was like, no, it's not. Yeah, your bag is not at the airport anymore. Yes, it is. <laughs> and then she goes, well, how do you know? I said, 
because I've got an air. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly where it is at the airport. I can locate it within two meters. And she goes, okay then. <laughs> so it's not been sent then. <laughs> no. So I went up there, went and picked it up. It was so there, good. as I said. Do they run out battery? Um, no, because they're done I've, off of, they ping off of um, other people's iPhones. Do they? Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. Wait. They steal battery. No, ha- it can't absorb battery. No, it's not that. It's oh. not it's not battery operated. It's just it's just it's I signal. Thought it has a battery. No. Is well, not a- that I know. But basically how how it is How's it going to be- work if it's so not got a battery? Be careful. No, what you say. Yeah, I know, yeah, I actually don't know. <laughs> so anyway, I, like I'm not talking about battery, right? But I'm talking about <laughs> how it works. Okay. So basically um and if I not, it it like pings off of other people's iPhones and that's how you can locate where it is. So say if you go to a country that no one uses an iPhone, it won't work. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Really? Can we I get my to, money we back need for to, that? We need to Google this. Yeah, that. Come back at me if, if, if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure okay. yeah, that it's, it pings off of iPhones. Okay. Interesting. Oh, we'll, we'll look at that later. I'll have a look. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Please tell me if I'm wrong, because that was really embarrassing <laughs> if I said that and then I'm wrong. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, this is from at a.i.athlete. What's the most embarrassing moment on the course? Oh, God. I don't, I don't know so if I can many. say this. Yes, you can. Definitely. <laughs> Whatever it is. You say it. Right, so I don't know if like this is a thing, but obviously being a female and like obviously that time of the month, yeah. that is like the most embarrassing thing that can ever happen. So obviously I've that has happened to me in Thailand. And she chose white shorts. And I was wearing white no. shorts. Like 100%. And Why did you do that? so basically I was two of my friends were absolute lifesavers and they bought me well actually they're not lifesavers. They bought me a skirt, do you remember? <laughs> yeah. So I'm not a skirt person. And um they there was like a stall at the course yeah. luckily and they bought me they brought me out um, a score and I changed like on the course but it was oh my god yeah. that is horrific but like like that's life you know, but it's, it's also horrific yeah like it's yeah it's, nature it is, like, it is life like and I'm I guarantee it's happened to mm. a lot of people that you know that's why they were saying like the, the footballers they now have darker shorts now yeah I know and Wimbledon like, yeah, they don't yeah. have to wear like white short like it, I think it's the way forward because you know how embarrassing is that when you've got a crowd mm. watching you? Yeah, and it's just and it uncomfortable. Was, as and it well. was worse because I was doing really well. Like so, I was in the top ten, and the yeah. cameras were on me, and oh, I was like, no. "This is not." Why did you isn't... choose white shorts? Like that. Yeah. Is so a, basically, like, you haven't been told. Like this, this happened. This is this is getting really deep, right? But um, when you're obviously f- you feel like you've finished, that was me, and it, it had been finished for a couple of days, oh, okay. and then it reappeared. Mm. And I was, and obviously in Thailand, it's hot and your blood is thinner, right? And it kind of, that's why it. Interesting. Yeah. So that, that is, is the most. embarrassing. And I'm mm. saying this on a podcast, but I don't. <laughs> it's also <laughs> life. It it's is life. also life. It is life. but Yeah, yeah that, that is, is life. But we that, learn from life. But yeah. I think that like for you, because it happened to you, it, feel, it felt very embarrassing. But for us that watched it, it was more like, oh, no. This is like like this happens all the time, but now it happened on the golf course in front of cameras, yeah. which like makes it. But is it it's really bad. Yeah, it's but like no one bad. actually. So no, like it was. I was lucky that, but it was quite funny because I actually wonder if the commentators thought that like she was wearing white shorts a minute ago, like now she's wearing a skirt, like <laughs> it's a totally different color. And I'm like, and my my even my auntie messaged me and she's like, I saw a picture of you in a skirt, <laughs> and I'm like. Yeah, don't that even. More go, like I literally got back there and I said, "Don't even go there." Like I was so mortified. Oh. But like, obviously, after nothing was said, and I think I finished like seventh that week. But I was yeah, actually, you well. I was doing. It was a mixed against the guys, and I actually played so good. But yeah. I just remember my caddy being like, "Yeah, there's a toilet up there." Like, and I'm like, "That is not going to help. <laughs> that is not going to help me." And the two girls, obviously, that were there, friends of mine, like God saved, for them. saved my life. Yeah, even but though that, you got her a score. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wasn't kidding at that point. I was like, I'll but I've never anything. actually played golf in a score and it just kept flapping about. And I was like, this is so annoying. Like, how do people do this? 
<laughs> literally, um, I literally only wear skorts and like dresses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm like, no, nah, shorts and trousers all the way. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Scarf? Have you got no, any? No, I can't beat that. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> you never like split your trousers or like, and, like. Oh, no. yeah, I've heard of people doing that. Yeah. No, no. You don't do anything embarrassing. Too cool for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is from at Maddie J. Peters. How do you turn pro? Like, what is the process? The process is just filling out a form, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Really? I think so, saying, yeah. yeah. Is that just, easy? You just sign your life away, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Do you have to be a certain level of golf? Well, you actually, you, you obviously have to have, com- like, um, competitions that you are eligible to play in because you wouldn't yeah. turn pro and then not be able to play anything because then that would be wasting your time yeah but, but you can though you, you can, can yeah, turn you can. pro yeah, and not can. have anything to play in but I don't know if there's like a handicap limit limit the then, I'm sure. what do you get if you turn pro why would an amateur want to turn pro apart from playing in events well you wouldn't you wouldn't turn pro unless you were eligible to play on the LET or the LPJ or no. if you wanted to do your PGA you, you just wouldn't you wouldn't turn pro. Got it. It's that simple. Well, I would advise advi- advise against it. I would. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. If you're not gonna play as a full time pro, then don't. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put my form in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the final question from at nineteen Marty G seventy five. What do you do away from golf? It's like, what's fun? What's fun in your life that isn't golf? Uh, well, I this weekend went to a Coldplay concert. That was really cool. Flex. Yeah. <laughs> that was jealous. so cool. That would have been epic. Where yeah. was it? Uh, in Gothenburg. Oh, cool. Yeah. 60,000 people. Awesome. Nice. Okay. They follow a lot of golfers now, don't they? They went to golf yeah. Coldplay. Are they? I'm pretty sure I had. I oh, I the great I they love Coldplay, yeah. Yeah, no, well, it's not like I go to concerts every weekend, but yeah, I did that on Saturday. That was pretty cool. And then on Tuesday last week, I went racing, Porsche racing, which was really cool. You were racing or you went and watched? I was racing. You looked a bit scared there now when I said that. Don't ask her who won, though. Yeah, I feel like you'd be quite fast either. Yes, that's what I like. Like, I can do that or i can just be on the couch for three days Mm. like it's either or i can go 100 percent in or i can be 100 percent out (laughs) all or nothing michelle um i love football so i could watch any football game going um i like to go and watch aberdeen man united who do you support yeah aberdeen and man united oh yeah gonna get the keyboard warriors coming out saying why do you support an english team when you're scottish but why do you support an English team when you're Scottish? It's oh, a long story. Um, Short version. Alex Ferguson used to be the manager of Aberdeen and then he moved and went oh. to be the manager of Man United and I just followed. A manager fan? Well, not, well just, <laughs> just, just a Scottish manager <laughs> fan, yeah. And then I decided, and then Man United were obviously winning everything, so stuck by I'll them. go with them. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah. Go, I'll go with them. Glory yeah. seeker as so, well. I so, yeah, no, that's kind of, I liked it. I, I used to play a bit as well, so I used to do that on a Sunday bit too old for that now um yeah. i mean not yet I don't know. <laughs> yeah you're too no, old you are when you've got 16 year olds like playing alongside you and stuff it's yeah. it's not fun but yeah no um that would be kind of my main main hobby i think that's fun all right this is the final question of the podcast a question that i will ask everybody and that is what is one thing people don't know about you that you wish they did so it could be anything that I wish they did. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they know Nothing. everything. One, one thing. I was discussing what mine was earlier with some of the crew here, and I think mine would be um, that I'm actually really shy. And what? I, I appreciate it when people come and say hi to me or greet me. Because it might seem I come across as cold, but I'm actually just really shy. <laughs> That's quite a good one. Really? Yeah, I'm like really introverted, you but I've like come, really practiced to be person. extroverted. Oh, that's a tough question, that. What, what, how did it come I up think with everyone, that? everyone knows everything about me anyway. Like, I don't think there's anything. I think, but you have to think, some of these people don't know who you are. Like, you're actually really fun. 
but maybe they don't know how fun you are. Uh, yeah, no, well. Like, yeah. you are the life laughing. and soul of the party. <laughs> really, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, well, I probably don't come across like that to people that I don't know. That's true. That's You've got like... a good rest in <laughs> <bitches, don't Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That too. There's a lot of things about me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I focus on Michelle now. I don't think I've got anything that I, I hide, really. No. No, no I can't. Like, I think <laughs> I'm pretty open. I think if people were to ask me. But people didn't know you, though. So no, what no, but if they didn't know me and they want, then, you know, they <laughs> Come were. Come find me. Okay, yeah. can I say one then? Yeah, go for well, it. Well, yeah. Um, for people that don't know Michelle or people that do and don't, Michelle is probably the kindest person I've ever met in my Agreed. life. Agreed. Ditto. So, so kind and thinks about everyone else before herself. That is probably one, th that's a thing that you can't see when you look at a person. No, but you can uh, because she's got, you've got a really warm energy. Like yeah, when I'm in your, you're you like hugging her. me by being near me. It's so yeah. weird. But yeah, you're definitely that. Yeah. Like. So when you get to know Michelle, that's probably the thing that stands out. How much she cares about people around her that um, she puts before <laughs> herself. And if there is ever an emergency you call michelle mm -hmm. if you desperately need help because she will come it's like an undescribable kindness no. that you have yeah. honestly you. now don't cry yeah yeah but then i think that's also why we are friends because you would be exactly the same in the same situation like you are there for mm. anyone that, and you are kind like you basically we would go out or whatever and you'll be like, you know, this is on me. Or that you're all constantly like that, <laughs> constantly, all the time. And like, if I ever needed her for anything, like she would be there for me. I know that for a fact. Mm. And yeah. I can trust her with my life, basically. And I think that's why we're good friends, you know. We cannot speak for like months and then, you know, we'll, oh, yeah. we'll be there like, you know. In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, yeah, 100%. Which I find very nice though with people that or with good friends. You might I might not see Michelle for two months mm. when we have time off, but then when we see each other, it's like we spoke yesterday. Yeah, yeah. which is quite nice. It's so nice. You need that though, yeah. you friends like that, because life is busy. Yeah, so, yeah. So. super busy, isn't it? And that is how a friendship blossoms on tour. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. Guys, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. We Thanks wish you, you. Thanks Thanks for the us. best of luck this week. Maybe we'll see your name for the second time on the board. Hopefully. Yes. Um, and you guys can obviously watch this on YouTube and also listen on all podcast channels. We will catch up with you very soon. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you.